Land. Uh, Tom, welcome to you, and what can you tell us? Yeah, evening to you, Jared. Well, these comments have certainly put Simon Goodwin on notice, as you said. So I understand he is by no means secure to keep his job beyond this year if they don't play finals in 2020. My mail is strong, and Goodwin is not safe if they don't play finals this year. So how is the question? How can they sack someone, potentially with two years left in his contract, worth $1.4 million uh, across the two years? I can tell you tonight that the soft cap, if we're Worst comes to worst is not an obstacle. So the D's have the fourth best balance sheet in the AFL. It's perhaps one of the most underrated stories here that as, at an administration level, uh, they're not in a terrible position. In fact, they're in quite a good financial position. They can pay over the soft cap next, next year and over the year after if they need to. They sold the lucrative... Uh, Lee Oak Hotel to Mooney Valley Racing Club for close to $11 million recently. And by Christmas, they'll be one of the few unassisted clubs if they raise another $400,000, as they expect to do. It will simply come down to what's the priority. Can the club function on potentially a $5 million soft cap next year and the year after? And I'm told, as a worst-case scenario, potentially they can. Now, Josh Marnie, the head of football, is also under pressure. And the players are absolutely under pressure as soon as this Wednesday night against the Adelaide Crows. And I'm also told that the players just took Glenn Bartlett's comments in their stride and there was no response. Tom, I can't believe that the club in this era of uh, where money is uh, so short and the soft cap is going to be a major problem, that you're going to burn one and a half million bucks. Yeah, well, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen. I don't think anyone's cheering for a sacking here. I'm saying as a worst possible case scenario, if they don't play finals, I'm told very reliably that Simon Goodwin's job is not safe. And, yeah, you burn $1.5 million, but you'd have to weigh up, and this is exactly what the board will have to weigh up if things go astray. Is it more expensive to keep Simon Goodwin or let him go? And in the end, the priority will be doing what's best for the football so, club. On, so you're saying that you would chop your soft cap in half effectively and, and operate on a 50% soft cap on the basis of this year, is he that big a disaster, Simon Gooden? Good no, one. no, you, you wouldn't chop it in... Um, again, this is That's a what you're telling me. Why is it chopped in half? Because $1.4 well, million dollars over two years is anywhere near $6 well, million because, dollars in one year. Because he's getting a massive haircut anyway. Who, the, yeah, the soft cap goes down to $6 million. That's it's right. at $9 so million. So you want to take it down another million? Well, well I'm, not, I'm not wanting to take it down anywhere, Gary. I'm telling you what could potentially happen. So, and this is on the... Because two weeks ago, this was not on the table. Everyone thought, there's no way you can sack the coach in this sort of well, year. So one, game, you, one game puts it on the table. One game, the last week of my conversations with people that I trust very much, tells me that this is absolutely on the table. Is that knee-jerk, Tom, do you think? One game? Uh, well, on the, on the back that they nearly beat Brisbane... They beat Hawthorne, they beat um, the Gold, Gold Coast Suns the, the week before. Yeah, well, it's m not my job to offer an opinion on what the club should do, but I can tell you at three and five, uh, with two games against Adelaide and North Melbourne to come and then Collingwood after a 14-day break, this can turn around pretty quickly. But they're restless. The board is restless are and the supporters are restless. And I also must say, in response to Nick Rewalt's comments just then about the players potentially being frustrated, the president uh, represents the members. And in the end, when the members are restless, so is the board and so is the president. That's exactly what we're seeing the other day when Glenn Bartlett gave those comments to John Ralph. Glenn Bartlett is a former...